you out a little bit. You've been second, third, so many times. But uh, how did the race go for you guys? Really good. I mean, that track was super fun. All right. Well, it is uh, 5 o'clock on race day, and the race is over. And you came across that finish line way earlier than we expected. Yeah. Um, but your day wasn't that good. Uh, what place did you get, Phil? We were second overall and first in class. So still first in class, so that's a win, but you came down here to do first overall and didn't quite get that, did you? Yeah, you know, this year KM put uh, Kyle Cheney and I normally race in the same class. They put Kyle in the pro stock class. They put me in pro mod. We kind of spread out all the good drivers across the field. Um, for KM, the goal was they really wanted a pro stock car to win because then they can claim a stock car one King of the Hammers. Uh, really same exact cars, just his car doesn't have the boat sides and he runs a 33 inch tire versus a 35. But uh, yeah, I mean, to me, second, but pays for first so and second is still your 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 best finish here at king of the hammers yeah. uh, as we're calling this the the great white buffalo race for you and it is still the great white buffalo race but um you did what you wanted to do you were just telling me uh when you're going through the desert there during the race you're asking bo what do you think about this pace and what did bo say Bo said, if pace is too hard, but if we want to win, that's what we got to do. Um, the pace here is just crazy in UTV class. I mean, it's literally like, it's pretty much like as much as you want a chance breaking your wrist is how hard you're driving out there. We are just bashing off the rocks the whole entire time. And then, uh, I mean, you were you were making up a lot of time. You guys were hauling ass in the desert. So was Kyle. Uh, and what a lot of people didn't know is that you did end up catching a flat, right? Yeah, a flat tire that I definitely earned myself, but uh, when we pulled the, we have a door bag that just holds the impact gun. When we pulled it out, it was missing the socket on there to change the tire. So I drove maybe six miles in the rock trails and everything on a flat tire. Um, and then finally I told Bo, just get out and change it with a crescent wrench, because we, we had an 18, but we didn't have a 19. And when he happened to get out of the seat, there was a socket sitting in the seat right there, and fr super frustrating, but... And, and, it, and th this is like what we talked about. Every race team runs into these little hiccups and stuff, but it's these little hiccups that can lose the whole race. And, you know, uh, in the 1,000 in Vegas Arena, you've had times where, you know, the wind has been like a minute and 30 seconds apart. So when you got a flat tire and the car is going slow, that makes a big deal. Yeah, you know, and Dustin Jones got by us on the flat tire and Thor's hammer. And then as soon as we get to the top, he's in a spot that we could just clean right up. He's sitting there winching, so then we're stuck behind him. Luckily, like, his co-driver was, like, still buckling in the car, so I started bumping on the back of him, you know, and, uh, you know, forced him off to the side because we went right up it, moved him out of the way, and then from there it was clean air. We winch sledgehammer, but that was the plan to winch sledge. And then but th by that point, I think uh, Chaney went up, jackhammer, and at that point it was like... We hit the back lake bed and the guy in second place was a minute and 30 seconds beating us on corrected time. And all we had was maybe 15 miles in the desert and we just went for it. That so whole you had to keep it to the wood just to maintain second place. Yeah, and, and you know, at one point, I think Cheney was 15 to 20 minutes ahead of you. And we thought that that, uh, that time differential had to do with that you, you chose to go up sledge because it was a choice yeah. and he chose to go up jack. But in the end, both of you winched on, on both of those lines. So I bet if we look at the split times on those trails, that you were pretty even on that. So basically, it comes down to the flat tire. And, you know, you pushed hard, right? And you're going to have those. I mean, you're prepared for a flat tire. And one little thing happens, and it is what it is. Yeah, and the way the pit is, you don't have to go in the pit. So we wanted to re-rack another tire to get another spare on there. So you lose time. You have to go all the way through the pit, do the whole entire pit loop to get back out. So you're going to lose, even if you didn't stop in the pit, you're going to lose a minute and a half there or something. So you added a minute and a half there, but that, that, you know, that's the thing you've raced enough and you make calculated decisions just because one mistake happened. You don't want to do another mistake. You don't want to have a flat tire on the back of the car. If you get another flat. So you went into the pits when you didn't have to wasted some time, but you know, and luckily you didn't need to change that tire, but those are the decisions you have to make, you know, real quick while you're out there in the car. I let Bo make those ones because I don't want to stop. I want to keep going. I'm like, Fuck, screw the spare tire. We're going for it. But uh, no, it's fun. I mean, the desert, it, I wish we would have qualified a little bit better. We qualified six. And the desert in like the big bumps, we're, we can, we reel everybody in in the big bumps because all these guys are woods racers. They're really fast drivers and super talented, but they race short course and woods racing. They don't race in the desert in like high speed big bumps. When we get there, we reel them in, but the speed difference, it's so hard when they're doing 80 in the desert and we're doing 95 to like 
drive straight through the dust at that speed. And I don't know, everybody at home doesn't know this, but this morning there was no wind. So even though you were still six, you know, third row off the line, I can guarantee you as soon as you hit the uh, lake bed there over BJ Baldwin Hill, you couldn't see anything, could you? We, we drove in the dust the whole entire first lap. Zero visibility the whole entire first lap. Yeah, and then the guys out front just have clean air, and so they're pulling away from you. Through, I mean, I know you're fast in the desert, but they're, they have the ability to pull away from you pretty quick. Yeah, it's a huge advantage. And then especially uh, Bryce Menzies, he's got his helicopter up there. We'd be in split lanes, and I know you're not supposed to communicate with your helicopter, but he'd be in a smooth lane, I'd be in a smooth lane, and then all of a sudden he would jump right in front of me. So you know the helicopter's talking to him. Big surprise there, huh? I, I couldn't figure out, you know, how Bryce Menzies was, was, was up there with you guys, and now I get it. I didn't know he had the helicopter. Yeah, I mean, I ordered my helicopter, but it didn't show up before I got here, so I guess maybe next year I'll have it, you know? <laughs> well, you know, it's still awesome to see you guys come across the finish, and, you know, really nothing wrong with the race car besides a flat, right? And uh, now you're headed home. you got a race in, what, two weeks? Yeah, we'll race Mint 400, I think, three weeks or something. And then this car, we're actually, not this one, but the replica of this one, the fresh one, uh, we'll use throughout the year. It's a, Even the Hammers cars, I mean, they have the boat sides, but they're kind of like a Swiss Army knife. We can race them all season long in all the desert races and take them to Rubicon, Fordyce, and go have fun in them. And I noticed we're standing here, which was your pit, and there's one truck and trailer left. The entire group has packed up and got out of here. And, you know, we still have two more days of racing here, but you guys came down, you did what you had to do, and now you got to get home and get ready for uh, the next race. Yeah, my crew, it's kind of a, it's always a joke. Like, if, if I win, everybody stays. If I get second, everybody's gone right away. So pits are empty. It looks like a second, second overall. You know, there's, a, a like, what, 101 other racers out there that would be so stoked to be second. And I know you're really happy to be second. I mean, second place is awesome. Podium's always good. Um, but, you know, this is going to push you that much harder because I know you want that win, Phil. Yeah, we'll come back. I mean, now that I have two of these cars and it's, the pace is just getting faster here, I kind of figured out, like we talked last night, about the pace in the rocks and just a little bit more practice. And I think we're, we're like, right there, you know, a couple percent and we can make it. Well, I mean... The, the rocks is not where you lost it. I mean, you know, you can go look at all the split times, but you carried that momentum. So whatever you did and change in driving in the rocks, I mean, one flat tire for, I mean, how many miles was the flat tire? Six miles or something. Yeah, so six miles with a flat tire and then the fact of changing it, not the way you're comfortably ready to change it with quick in, out, back in the car, that's it. So, well, thanks for letting us uh, take a little time here for the evening and uh, we'll see you on the next one, Phil. Sounds good.